I just want to welcome everybody. Uh, this is how we're going to do things today. So um, in a minute, uh, I'm going to call either Jeannie or Colleen up there. I told them to arm wrestle uh, about who's going to come up and do the opening prayer, but I'd like someone to come up in a minute and kind of bless the space. But before we get there, we're going to start today with our meet and greet. So if you would please just get up and say hi to your neighbor and get a handshake, a hug, whatever you're comfortable with. And we'll get into it here in a minute. You know, you're allowed to shake paws today, too. Shake paws. You can shake paws today. Hey, hey, Sandy, can you can you bring the other um, other PowerPoint up? Yes, please. All right, if you could return to your seats, and we'll get started. Uh, who won the Who won the arm wrestle thing? Okay. Have Jeannie come up as our one of our prayer chaplains. Yes. We could talk about the all, all of the things. Oh, welcome this morning. I feel a little energy in here today. That's great. Tam, this was a good idea. It's always a good idea. The fifth Sunday. And we're so happy to have Reverend Colleen here today. And all the furry friends. So that's a lot of fun. I guess are there some cat people here? <laughs> yeah, and, and I guess, you know, I don't know, with all the dogs, it's kind of hard to bring the cats. So. <laughs> but, uh, ah. but here we are at Unity. We're reminded of the Christ candle. So if you take a moment, ah. remember the light within you. Uh, I feel y'all's light energy today. Uh, so, uh, let's welcome this sacred space, this fellowship that we have, and come into just a moment of prayer before the festivities. We remember what we are. We remember Christ's nature within us. There are appearances of I don't know, but yet we do know. We know who we are. We know that this, ah, this Unity Church that's been here for 87 years, so much it's here for us feel the sacred space it just wants to be expressed just as we want to express our powers of life love and wisdom And we remember the power of faith and strength. Yes, yes, we are unity. We are unity of Little Rock. And we are so grateful for this day and for our future, whatever it is. And now, let's say our statement of being together. Is that up there? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I am ever one. What I am an individualized expression of God. <laughs> For one, with his perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. Okay, so 
here's what we're going to do today. We are going to play a song, followed by an opportunity for any of you who would like to share a pet experience. So, and I will tell you, it will probably be uh, specific. So after this first song we do, if anybody would like to share a story about a pet that is not a dog or cat, any other kind of pet. And not be a dog or a cat. There will be other opportunities for that. Alligators, long, long, long. Yes, any anything that's in the Humpy anything that's going to be in the in the song would work. Uh, I'm betting that nobody has ever had a pet unicorn or does not have one now. Who, what do I know? And please feel free to sing along with this song. It was very very popular back in whenever it was done by the Irish Rovers. Well, a long time ago, when the earth was green, there were more kinds of animals than you'd ever seen. They run around free while the world was being born, and the loveliest of all was the unicorn. There were green alligators and long neck geese, some humpy back camels and some chimpanzees, some cats and rats and elephants, but sure as you're born. The loveliest of all was the unicorn. That's what they say. Now I know I had a vision that caused him no pain. A nasty weather forecast for a whole lot of rain. It came to him that what he needed to do was to build a floating zoo so he could gather them green alligators and long neck geese some humpty back camels and some chimpanzees and cats and rats and elephants as sure as he'd been born he needed to get the unicorn well noah he was pumped to answer the call. He finished up the ark just as that rain started to fall. He marched in the animals two by two, took note as they went through. Hey now, I got the green alligators and long neck geese, some humpty back camels and some chimpanzees, some cats and rats and elephants. Oh, I'm so forlorn. I don't so see no unicorn. And Noah looked out through the driving rain. The unicorns were hiding, playing silly games, kicking and splashing while the rain was pouring. Oh, them silly unicorns. There were green alligators and long neck geese, some humpty back camels and some chimpanzees. Noah cried out, we gotta go. The rain's a pouring. We just can't wait for those unicorns. Sorry, guys. The ark started moving. It drifted with the tide. The unicorns looked up in the rocks and they cried. And the waters came down and sort of floated them away. And that's why you never see no unicorns to this very day. Well, we got them green alligators and long neck geese, some humpty back camels and some chimpanzees, some cats and rats and elephants. As sure as you're born, you're never gonna see no unicorns. Well, thank you, thank you, Mr. Magoo. <laughs> oh, yeah. All righty. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have a tale, pun intended, about a pet that they would like to talk about other than a cat and a dog? Something they have now or something they had in the years past? Colleen? You know, I could use somebody to hand the mic around, I suppose, for, so people don't have to run up on the stage. Any volunteers? Oh, you got a mic. Well, listen, see something. Hey, but you won't see it. 
and um, it's a pet rock. Is that right? <laughs> a pet rock? <laughs> I have two kids, Joe and Pam. Uh, Joe and Pam is his wife, and Becky. And we uh, traveled some with uh, their dad. We were down in New Orleans, and we came across an organ grinder that had a monkey. And so the kids wanted it. And to our shock, surprise, he was willing to sell it. So we bought that monkey and brought it home. And uh, we named it, oh my gosh, that name just left me. Started with an S. OK. Um, but I had a sewing machine in the kitchen. And I made drapes and did upholstery and stuff back in those days. And I had a, a three-legged stool that I sat on at the sewing machine. And that, that monkey would sit on the stool beside me. And he would kind of play with my side and nudge me. And, um, and so he was just a member of the family. And it got winter time, and it was getting cl close to winter time. And so he really wanted to be outside. Well, one day I opened the door to take something out the back door, and he slipped out. And I'm out there calling and calling. I almost called his name. And uh, I just absolutely couldn't believe he could get that far away. And I just was, I thought, how am I going to tell these kids that their pet's gone? And as I went back to the door, all of a sudden I saw the shrub by the back door move. And there he was in the shrub saying, hi, I'm here. <laughs> so he entertained us. But they, the kids had a goat, they had a donkey, they had this monkey. We had ducks that we captured, wild ducks, all kinds of stuff. But my experience with pets has just been that they're, they are the most loving, compassionate, sharing, and they taught me unconditional love. I'll always remember that monkey and I, spider, I can't remember what his name was. They'll come to me as I'm talking later. But anyway, if you've never had a pet monkey, I will tell you this, don't get one. <laughs> the odor can be horrendous. <laughs> So no, no pet monkeys. Anybody else have uh, any other non-dog or cat stories? I know Amy has Molly the parrot. I also know she's kind of shy, so she's probably not going to talk about her. But that's OK. Uh, some of us have been to her home and seen Molly. Um, she's pretty awesome. Uh, let's see, over the years, I've had, a, I've had a few rodents here and there. We had guinea pigs, Bob the rat. Remember Bob the rat? Bob the Red, he was kind of cool. Um, I remember having a hamster once. And ferrets, ferrets don't get ferrets either. They talk, I mean, they say they take the scent out of them, but nah, they still smell really bad. <laughs> All right, we'll get into the next song, which I have to be at the piano for. We can share a dog story. This is Dennis. No. No. Is that wrong? You got it wrong. Man of the hour. Man of the hour. It's like Andy Alford. Yes. So this will be about, after this, we can share about dogs from the dog That are with us today, not dogs from the past. That'll be later. And this is a quirky little tune I came across, sung by Nora Jones about her poodle, Ralph. It's him or me. That's what he said. I can't choose between a vegan and a pothead. So I choose you because you're sweet. And you give me lots of loving, and you eat meat. And that's how you became. I only man of the hour. You never lie, and you don't cheat. And you don't have any baggage tied to your feet. Do I deserve 
to be the one Big you breakfast, lunch, and dinner Take you to the party at dawn Make you really be I only man of the hour I know you'll never bring me flowers Flowers, they will only die And no, we'll never take a shower together I know you'll never make me cry You'll never argue You don't even talk and I lay away, let me lead you and go outside and walk where you really be. I only man of the hour. Now where you really be. I only man of the hour. I am glad I am pleasing the crowd. That's awesome. <laughs> um, let's see. Sandy, you escaped. I was going to have you bring that other PowerPoint back up for a minute. Okay. Um, who has a story they'd like to share about a dog that they own currently? We have some here, so don't be shy. And Sandy can't at the moment, but we could talk about her dogs, which are not being... <laughs> yeah, Betty, you got a dolly story? <laughs> oh, Sherry, here, have a mic. All right, we don't have Sherry's dog up there, so hold it. We've been having to watch or we run into everything. <laughs> so it's, it's been an entertaining week with her. But I did want to tell about, I used to have another blonde cocker named Emily, which I, I really loved her. And um, she, she was so much fun and she was an athlete. And my son taught her, she would jump up in the air and catch frisbees. And I mean, she was really good at it, and she was just so much fun, and we did that. And anyway, she's not with us anymore, but I really loved Emily. Okay. Thank Wonderful. You. Thank you. Anybody else? Today? So right there is Chloe, who we currently have. We adopted her. Um, as you guys know, my daughter's very much into wrestling. So... I was up in um, So she had called and said, um, I just rescued a little long hair chihuahua. There she is in the middle there. And I know I can't find her. It's got to be a special home. She's tiny. She needs lots of loving and care. So, of course, written across my forehead. I said, sure, bring her to Michigan. Well, time and she terrorized she got to walk she got to drink out of the community water bowl first and to this day she still rules the roost she children unless they have food in their hand and then their best 
friend ever and does not leave their... <laughs> That's my quote. Sorry. <laughs> Great. And then we have Emmy also. Emmy's up there too. Emmy's the opposite of Chloe. Emmy's very sweet. Uh, also to our... <laughs> Where's her picture? Her picture's coming up. Why is this? Is this mic still on? I, I can't hear a thing on this mic. Hello, 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 hello. I think that's on. Okay, that's better. Oh, there's Emmy. There's Emmy. Um, very sweet, very sound sensitive, though. She reacts to every little noise and gets kind of skinnish about it. So, any, anybody else want to share about their dog? Betty, you sure you don't want to tell us something about Dolly? Tell us about Dolly. Can I come up here and take this mic? Because that one does, doesn't seem to be working very well. Okay. So I don't even, I don't have my dog with me today, but I think a great many of you have already met her because she's been here before. So I think she's the cutest little dog ever. She's a rescue, but she is mostly Bichon, according to dog experts, but she may have a little mall piece in her. Um, she's not here today because, well, she has developed a, uh, she has Cushing's disease and has had for four years, and, but she has, I, you know, I give her medications and she feels great, except then Cushing's comes along with a variety of other things, so then she went deaf, and so, okay, we survived that. And then she has a cataract in an eye. And then so, hey, she still feels like she's uh, um, the queen of the world. Um, and then uh, recently she had a major UTI infection. So uh, she, we got over that. <laughs> and my daughter says, Dolly is just the gift that keeps on giving. And she, <laughs> she just keeps on getting over it. And so today she's not here. For one thing, she does have an attitude. Uh, and she sometimes, she's very protective of me. <laughs> so y'all, some of you have experienced that too. You know, she attacked another little dog at an outdoor concert and that little dog was doing nothing, but she ran over there and jumped on it. It was so bad, it was so embarrassing. Um, but now she has, and I'm gonna ask y'all for her, for prayers for her because the latest thing she has is when she has Cushing's, they, they get these black freckles on their body. And now they're, they're uh, about a dozen of them have turned into adenomas, non-malignant cancers, which requires, like this morning, I've spent 30, 45 minutes, you know, uh, swabbing each one of them and putting antibiotic cream on. But she feels great. And when she feels great, she plays what we call a race car. She runs through the house, through the bedroom, just barely making it around the corners, then back through the kitchen to the living room, around the couch, back again. We call it playing race cars. And although she hates for me to doctor her, her sores, did she... Something? I just jumped in there, that's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> So anyway, she's doing good, but she, uh, you know, I appreciate, I'm sure we'll get over this one too, since she's a gift that keeps giving, but uh, I appreciate your prayers for her. She, she feels like a million dollars. I mean, after I doctored her today, she did race car major all over the house. So she would have loved to have been here today, but no, can't do it. <laughs> okay, that's Dolly. Thank you very much. Absolutely. I bet this will even reach you. I hope so, because I'm not moving. Um, I'm babysitting at the moment Sandy's dogs, but I would like to introduce you to the two if you haven't met them yet. They are both boys. The larger one over there is Mr. Magoo, because he has cataracts and he's pretty much blind. Uh, so he bumps into a lot of things and he always has to be on a leash uh, so that we don't lose him somewhere. The little one here is the feistier, definitely, of the two. Uh, this is Mufasa, because for any of you that have seen Lion King, he thinks he's the biggest, baddest lion in the world, uh, and he definitely will jump on Magoo on occasion to let him know that he's the boss. Uh, both of them, well, Mr. Magoo is a rescue. Um, Mufasa was gotten by Sandy as a puppy, and she had him for several years, and then he attached to her grandson, 
Nicholas, whom some of you may remember. So he became a Christmas present to Nicholas one year uh, because he just followed the little guy wherever he went, as you know how they do. And then it came out several years that uh, Nicholas couldn't keep him anymore, so he came back home. So these are our two at the current time. They are definitely a handful, <laughs> as you can see. And I know Sandy's busy in the back, but these are, these are the two boys right now. Mufasa is not used to being on a leash, so he's not a real happy boy this morning. Uh, Mr. Magoo is a very loving, cuddly puppy, and he's over here. But right now they know their mama's in the other side of the room, and they're not real thrilled with that. <laughs> so anyway, this is Magoo and Mufasa. So if you run across and just give them a love. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. All right. We are, oh, we have another one. I've been studying all of this, any metaphysical stuff, since I was 29 years old, and I'm still working on what I want to be when I grow up. But I have a dog at home, Ariel. She's a white, her mother was a white shepherd, and her daddy is uh, Malmute, and she's very hyper. <laughs> Except when I go into the bedroom, my bedroom, where I do prayer work, she gets very calm and very quiet. And one of the things that she has taught me is that animals are very telepathic. They have more spirit, spiritual abilities. And well, we have the same ones, we just aren't aware of it, but they use theirs all the time. And they just, they know when you're coming home, you meet 10 miles away and they know you're coming. I mean, we, we think that's kind of strange, but what else can't, it just, they know, they use their abilities and we can learn a lot from them by learning to use our abilities too. Especially, well, even cats. I don't think there's any animal that doesn't have that ability in them. Anyway, I just wanted to, to let you know that I've been working with her and she's been teaching me for several years now. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, so uh, in a moment, we're gonna have an opportunity to talk about our cats if you like. for the PowerPoint to come up again. Um, sorry about that, we're just kind of switching back and forth here today. But uh, hey, I got this song from uh, the movie, Disney movie, The Aristocrat, Aristocats, if anybody remembers that one. Everybody wants to be a cat Because a cat's the only cat Who knows where it's at Everyone's picking up on their feline Because everything else is obsolete Not a square with a horn Make you wish you weren't born Every time he plays Every square in the act he can set music back to the caveman days. Well, I heard some corny birds who tried to sing, but a cat's the only cat who knows how to swing, who wants to dig a long hair gig or stuff like that when everybody wants to be a cat. I was square with the horn makes you wish you weren't born Every time he plays And a square in the air he's gone Set this music back To the caveman day Where everybody wants to be a cat Because a cat's the only cat 
knows where it's at While playing jazz you always has a welcome back Cause everybody digs a swinging cat Everybody digs a swinging cat Everybody digs a swinging cat Right, who has any cattails? <laughs> Who's got cats at home? Anyone? You got one, Pat? Tell us about your cat. Oh, Becky. Becky, tell us about your cat. I guess if I got up from behind the camera, I could see who was, who was talking. <laughs> hey. I've always had cats, at least since I've been on my own. Um, and I moved early in life when I got my degree and I moved off and away from home and that's a really difficult thing to do when you're from the south and you move to the northeast. Oh Lord. It was not a good time but what I did was I made a good move and I went to a cattery and got my little Persian. And uh, I remember hitting the darkest moment of my life there in Albany, New York and just sitting there just bawling my eyes out and my little kitty came up behind me and started nudging and just would not leave me alone and I finally ended up laughing because he was there. He understood I needed him in that moment and my cats have always been there in the moments I need them most and they have that connection with you and saved my life, you know, and just brought me back around and. And so, I still have a cat. In fact, I just got a kitten. And he makes me laugh. She makes me laugh every day. That's hilarious. They're hilarious, you know. The back flips that you could never do. Yeah. So. Thanks, Becky. We don't currently own a cat, but I've had cats over the years. Um, anybody else have a current cat story? Uh, yeah, we you can tell a, a past cat story, too, because we, we'll probably have other, plenty of those stories later. We used to have a cat, and we had two cats. I'm not allergic to them, but I still had them because they're so cute. But uh, we had a cat, Marmalade and Tuffy, and Tuffy was uh, sort of the newer cat on the block. And um, we'll, he was funny because he would hide around corners, and when we were walking by, he would jump out and grab our foot. Uh, but one day, Bill d uh, happened to discover that Tuffy, uh, if after he did that, after Tuffy grabbed the foot, if Bill ran and hide, Tuffy would go looking for him. And so we got to where we could play hide and seek with our cat Tuffy. <laughs> he would play right along, so it was, it was fun. He was a cute little guy. Thank you, Jerry. Do you have a cat story? That's okay. <laughs> My mom used to have a cat named Pebbles. <laughs> and um, she had attitude like no other cat I've ever met. And we've always had a cat around besides dogs. But this cat was um, very possessive of mom. And um, so she would get jealous if I tried to talk to her. So she would get between us. I, if I came and sat on the edge of her bed to talk to her, she'd jump up in her lap and she, she'd start rubbing her head on her chin so she couldn't talk without getting a mouthful of fur. And she'd sit on top of the hamper and if the dogs came by, she would like swat at them. And uh, so of course I'd get to babysit when mom would be out of town. And the cat would give me the cold shoulder like, you're not mom. Don't, don't mess with me, just put my food in my water and I'll be good. So after so many days, then she would crawl in my lap like, all right, she's not coming back, you can pet me now. And then I would pet her and she would meow at me like, look, if you're not gonna do it right, then don't bother. So <laughs> I'm like, hey, you crawled in my lap. <laughs> you're asking me, either deal with it or go. So anyway, this cat was, 17 or 18, I think, when she finally passed. But uh, she definitely was a one-owner cat. So, 
that's my story. I have to tell a story on my current cat. Um, he, I found him at the PetSmart, you know, shopping, and he reached out of the cage and grabbed hold of me like, you're not leaving without me, you know, you're mine. So he, we went home together, and uh, he wasn't very big at that time. He's about 16 now. Uh, but his favorite thing, I lived in an apartment and I had little potted plants, and he would curl up in the potted plants and then he would kill them, you know, because the weight of him would just crush whatever was in there. So I named him Sasquatch because I said it wasn't polite to call him Big Butt, so I named him Sasquatch. And uh, he lives up to that name, and he's currently at home because he doesn't deal well with carriers at all. He rips them apart. Um, but I was living in an apartment and I was having um, some troubles, and so I was walking my neighborhood, and Sasquatch would go with me. And it was very hilly, so some of the hills I couldn't walk very well. I could go down okay, but getting back up was not very easy. So he would go out with me, and I started walking this one parking lot that was right next to our apartment buildings. And he just thought that was ridiculous. So he would make about two laps with me, and then he'd lay down on the grass at the edge of the parking lot. And he'd sit there and he'd watch me go by, and he'd watch me go by, and he'd watch me go by, and it didn't matter how many laps I made, he stayed there until he saw me head for the street. And then he knew we were going home. So then he'd get his little body up, and we'd go home. And that's my story on Sasquatch. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Thank you, everybody. And now, uh, Bill is going to do a song that he wrote. It's called A Dog's Life. And he's going to tell you a story about how this song came to be. And then after that, we can talk about, uh, we'll have another chance to talk about any of our past pets if we like. Well, it was uh, back in about 1993 or thereabouts. We, we found a dog, uh, a uh, full blooded Australian cattle dog. We named her. Pepper, and uh, she was one of the best dogs we ever had. And shortly after we got her, uh, I came home from work one day and I was wanting to play my new guitar. I had a new Takamine guitar and, and she wanted to play with me, Pepper did. I made her go sit in the corner while I played my guitar. And she, she curled up in a little bitty ball in the corner and she looked at me with these big sad eyes. And so to make her feel better, I wrote her a song. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a dog's life It's a dog's life. life Well, it's a dog's life Curled up in your corner on the floor It's a dog's life outside Scratching on your door It's a dog's life Hanging round your table for a scrap why don't you let me jump right up there and oh. laugh? It's a dog's life. Yeah, it's a dog's life. Well, sometimes I get to thinking that you treat me like a stray. And I just don't believe I should be treated this way. But first you make me fetch and then you make me sit in bed. And then you send me back and with my tail between oh. Oh, Life. It's a dog's life. Now I don't know why I keep on nipping at your heels when you keep treating me this way. But I just keep on waiting because I can't help. Anticipating goals I believe every dog Will have it You know that's true When it's, it's a, a dog's, dog's life. life Yeah, it's a dog's life When well, it's a dog's life Curled up in the corner on the floor It's a dog's life outside Scratching on your door It's a dog's life Hanging round your table for the why don't you let me jump right up there in your lap? It's a dog's life. 
Thank you, Bill. I have, I have another story to tell about right, Pepper. Another story, please. Uh, when we lived in uh, in Tennessee, we lived out in the country in Tennessee. We had a pretty big lot out in the country. We had uh, a couple of dogs, Pepper, and, and we had a, a big Alaskan Malamute named Sitka. And uh, Sitka was a big sissy of a dog. She didn't want to go outside. She wanted to stay in her crate in the basement all the time. But Pepper, Pepper had, had turned into sort of a wild dog. She dug dens out under all the trees in the backyard, and she would never come in, never, ever. She, she'd stay out there, except one night. There was one night I heard her. Uh, we, it was a, it was a walkout, it had a walkout basement. She was down by the walkout basement door wanting to come in. So I went, in, went down there and I let her in and she kind of slunk in and crawled into her crate and got the way back in the back and curled up in a little ball in her crate. I, I closed the crate and I went back upstairs and I said to Jerry, there must be something going on. I mean, Pepper wanted to come in and get in her crate and that's just really unusual. But there wasn't anything in the weather. It was perfectly, uh, perfectly fine weather. And no, no forecast for anything. Well, the next morning, uh, early in the morning, it was bright sunny morning, but all of a sudden the wind started picking up. You could hear it picking up. And I, I went over to the window and I saw this wind, I saw wind pick up a bunch of debris and knock it against our, our window pane and uh, thought maybe we ought to get down in the basement. And just about that time it was all over. And uh, as it turns out, there was a tornado. And it had come right across the backyard, come straight towards our house stopped at the bottom of the hill, turned, and went up. And uh, later that day, we were out walking around, and, and we talked to the neighbors across the street there, and uh, they asked, did you get any damage? And we said, no. And so, well, come around here. And taking the, taking the roof off of their, off of their uh, porch, and it was, I don't know how Pepper knew about that tornado, but she knew. She was, I, I believe, <laughs> whatever you want to say. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. And later, later, Pepper stayed with us for a number of years, and later she became completely blind, totally blind. And I used to walk her, this was when we lived in St. Louis, I used to walk her uh, three times a day around the block, and I had, I had the leash, and she learned to respond to the most subtle little motions on the leash, so I could guide her right down the middle of the sidewalk, and she ne no, you'd never know she was blind to see her doing that. I used to call myself her seeing eye person. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Anybody else have a, a story about their favorite pet from the past? Jeannie? Well, I must tell about Tubbs the Schnauzer. I inherited the, the little Schnauzer from my son and brought him to Little Rock from Flagstaff. And um, Tubbs was kind of confused. He thought he was a cat because he seemed to have had nine lives. He loved chocolate. And you know, chocolate should just kill a dog right out. But uh, one time Chris came visiting from Flagstaff before he moved to Little Rock. And uh, he had, it was Valentine's, and he had a pound of chocolate in his bag. And that dog found that chocolate and ate that whole box. And then he went out, Chris went out and got a cheap, a cheaper thing of chocolate just to, you know, to have some candy and, and uh, Tubbs found that. Uh, it, was just, it was amazing. And, and one time even on the deck, he got into blood meal and, I, and that should have done him in and it didn't. <laughs> and, and that little dog, he, he was so smart. And, and oh, one thing I loved about him is whenever the doorbell rang, he would run for the doorbell and just throw himself against the door and then spin twice. And he did it that way every time. And poor little thing became deaf and blind. And, and finally, the day that he just couldn't even go out to the bathroom, Chris and I knew that we had to put him down. And, and you know, y'all talk about how spiritual animals are. We felt 
that little soul leave that body. We will never forget that when we were with him at that time. And, you know, he caused some trouble, but yeah, they, they are, it's amazing the unconditional love we experience. So. <laughs> Does that remind you of Bella a little bit? How many bags of candy did she consume over the years? We had to change the name of the cake for her. Yes. <laughs> she she gets sick, but she survives every time. Chocolate or not, didn't matter. Anybody else have a story? Favorite story about a passage? Travis? You're gonna have to wander up here a little closer to the mic. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> no, it's not my pet rock. I don't currently have a pet, but this is a, actually a, a, my, one of my, my most recent pet, and uh, was a bird. I had two, used to have a couple of cockatiels, uh, Fafi and Fifa. Fifa and Fafi were their names. And I inherited them, how I got them, never mind, it's it. But I enjoyed it, you know, I never, I'd had cats and dogs, and I really liked having these two birds. And well, one morning I got up, and uh, the male bird, uh, Fifa, was dead. You know, that's what happens with birds. I don't know how old these cockatiels were, I inherited them from a woman that raised him in cabot but anyway he was dead and so you know that's why i just had the one cockatiel well one day i'm at my office and i'm at work and i have my neighbor I have a hispanic neighbor and i've known her for 30 years and uh, she cleans my house and she called me one day and she said travis i'm at the office and i'm going yeah cruz what is it where's your bird i said what where is your bird? And I said, my bird, it's at home. It's, it's, in, it's at home. No, it's not. I just saw your bird on my front porch. And I said, Cruz, if my bird's on your front porch and somebody has broken into my house and let the bird out of the cage and let it loose because my bird was locked up in its cage this morning when I left. And I don't think anything about it. Well, then I go home at lunch and I pull into my driveway and right there on the little, you know, the front porch, I got these posts and Right there's a cockatiel sitting there. I'm thinking, what the heck is this? And I get out. My bird is still inside the house in the cage, and I've got her there in front of the window, and she's just a chirping and a chirping and a chirping, and this cockatiel's out there talking to her. And so I go inside, I get my other cage, I bring it out, and I put it on the bed of my pickup truck, and I put some food and water in it, and he, he's jumping one of my pecan trees, and as soon as I get away from it, he just swoops down, hops into the cage, and starts to eat because he's hungry, you know? And so I inherited that bird. I named him Bebop because he would just Bebop around and he could talk. He would say, I love you, I love you. And so cockatiels, if you know about cockatiels, it's very hard to teach a cockatiel. That was back in 2010. I had him for five years and then I moved somewhere and had to, that I couldn't have the bird, so I had to find a home farm. But uh, anyway, I, I, I always felt like talking about a spiritual nature. I felt like that, that my female cockatiel, she attracted, and I actually put signs around town and I put posts on Facebook that I found this cockatiel. So I was trying to find the owner and I found out that there were several people in England that have cockatiels. I didn't realize there were so many bird owners down there, but uh, offering to take it, but I, I kept it. So that's my pet story. Bebop and FIFA, huh? Okay. Travis might win for the most unusual names. I'm not sure. Anybody else have a, a past pet story? I've, I've got a couple. I um, had a dog years ago. Uh, it, it was a classic. Uh, he followed me home from school kind of story. My oldest uh, son, Dane. And, you know, we did, this, we did the, the thing, we posted pictures up, and this was before, you know, this was a long time ago, this was before Facebook or any of that. So, you know, just a neighborhood kind of thing. And anyways, Pappy ended up staying with us. A couple quick Pappy stories. Um, we had him for a while. One day, and this was my, my first wife, Carmela. Anyways, one day she's in the kitchen, Pappy's in there kind of at her feet. She's getting a little annoyed with him, and she just looks at the dog and says, Drop dead, Pappy. And he does. He just drops dead. That's how we found out he knew how to play dead. We had no idea. <laughs> and after that, we were amused with making him do that constantly. 
And the other thing that was really cool about Pappy was uh, you could take a beer. I used to drink a little beer back then, a little more than I do now. And um, take a beer, you'd open the beer, and you'd, you'd put it in front of his face, and he would make this, this face like, I mean, just like this was the worst thing he ever smelled. He wanted nothing to do with it. But then if you took this, that beer and poured it in a bowl, he would lap it up. He would, <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> oh, good old Pappy. Um, and then I had a black cat uh, named Cleo. Cleo uh, actually was a rescue. Um, she was a kitten. She crawled underneath the, the hood of the car, uh, seeking warmth. It was in the wintertime. And... Uh, that's where she was found. She came came home with us. And she was she was kind of skittish. Uh, wasn't real friendly. Would hide in the basement, you know, when strangers came over. Um, I used to smoke back then, and for some reason we thought that if we smoked in the basement, it was better than smoking anywhere else in the house, you know. Um, no. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, go down there and smoke. Well, she she is the only cat I have ever seen, and maybe. Maybe other people have witnessed this, but she liked to play fetch. We had this little rubber mouse and go down the basement to smoke my cigarette. She'd go grab that mouse and she would bring it to me and I would throw it across the basement and she would bring it back. And she would do that about four or five times until she got tired and let me know that it was my turn to go get the mouse. So anyway, she, she loved to play fetch. That was her thing. Um, Anybody else? Oh, Scout. We had a picture of Scout up there. We'll see you see that. Okay, this is my puppy that has passed. Um, and I kind of saved him for last. But several years ago, um, I was taken down by a pinched sciatica in my back. And for several weeks, I had to have help just sitting up. I would eat laying down, I couldn't move, I couldn't stand up without help, and all of this. And so through some uh, chiropractic and physical therapy, I finally got to where I could get up and move around with a walker and this and that. But I'm not a real good person on willpower doing things that I know are good for me. Um, so I thought, well, I'll get a dog. Haven't had a dog in a long time. If I get a dog, I gotta take it out. You know, so that at least gets me outside, gets me up, and gets me moving. So I looked around at the rescue shelters, and I saw a picture of this poor little dog. Went over to the shelter and got him, and we named him a Scout. The reason was he had been out on the sidewalk and, and the, just roaming loose. He was a Lhasa Apso, which if any of you know the breed, if you see the, the ones that are done in show dogs, they're the ones like the Chinese mane with the long, brushed hair that are a beautiful dog. Well, if you can imagine that little dog after being out alone for quite some time was really unrecognizable. He was so dirty, he was so matted, um, but he didn't cower from me and he didn't growl at me. So I thought, okay, you're the right size, you're coming home. After we go to the vet to have you shaved down so we know how big you are. So anyway, we took Scout home and uh, he got to be my therapy dog, really. Uh, at first, I could only get up and get outside to the door and walk the grass that was in between the, the driveways between the neighbor and I. And then we got to where we could walk the dead end that was in front of the house. And then after several weeks and months of doing that, we actually got up to the corner and back. But I would take stock of how many houses I went by so I would know how far I was actually able to walk. Well, during this time, of course, we developed a really close bond. He would sleep in my bed and uh, be near me wherever I was, if I was in the chair, he was next to me. He was definitely a lap dog. I had Scott about five years. Uh, he would, this picture you'll see of him later is when we'd go on a camping trip, but he was definitely a city dog. He wanted to be in the RV, not outside. The only time he was outside is when he checked out every tree in the campsite to see who had been there before him. Uh, but he was definitely an inside the RV camping dog. After several years, we would go for walks and I was slowing down again and he didn't think that was really correct. 
So he would sit his little butt down in the middle of the road and not go any further. We're not going home yet. I want to walk some more. And if I ignored his request and tried to pull him back home, he would just sit there until he slipped the collar off. So of course then I had to go catch him to bring him home. So he definitely had his own opinions. He told me when it was bedtime because he'd go sit in front of the door and bark at me until I went to bed. Um, and he was a partner. He was a companion in the truest sense of the word. For all of you that had rescues, I've had animals 16 years, and they've lived a good long life. Sorry, I didn't realize this was going to come home. He was fine one day, and the next day, he laid on the floor and he couldn't get up. His whole backside had just collapsed. That night I picked him up and put him on my bed. I took him to the vet the next day because all of his inner workings had uh, dispelled themselves on my bed. Water, blood, everything. He was just barely alive. And the doctor put him to sleep. So he went to sleep in my arms. <sighs> Sandy and Adam brought him home. And Adam uh, dug a great site for him under the tree. Sandy made one of her bedazzled markers for his gravesite. I've had to give away and let go of many animals. The scout was one who brought me his spirit. He brought me his strength. He truly gave me unconditional love. And I know all of you that have animals in your life feel the same. Uh, there is a very special gift from God that he gives to us to love and to feel the closeness that we want to feel when we're in his presence. So I asked Tam earlier for a special song and I dedicate it not only to Scout, but to those of you who have also let go of loved ones, two-legged or four-legged, and uh, I hope you feel that you say scout for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, we all, uh, many of us had that one special pet, I think, in our lives that really had touched us. I know Jeannie was very fond of one that we had uh, a rescue by the name of Fifi, and she's not going to talk about it, otherwise we'd see more tears, which is fine. Um, but uh, just a quick, um, quick little word about Fifi before we get to that song. Um, she hated me. She was Jeannie's dog. She, she absolutely would, had nothing to do with me. Um, and uh, she was very sound sensitive about certain sounds. And uh, I don't know if I could say this in church, but especially farts. She did not like farts. <laughs> I, she would, you know, we, we had a TV in our bedroom, and sometimes we'd be sitting in her, and on the bed watching TV, and she'd be, she'd be there on the bed with us, and, and, you know, I don't know about you, but I can be a little gassy at times, and, you know, and I'd do my thing, and she would just jump up like the world was coming to an end. It was hilarious. <laughs> and be like, oh, my God. <laughs> but she was fine with sneezes or something like that. I don't know what it was. Uh, even her own. Sometimes we'd be sitting there and all of a sudden she would be just like, she'd do the same thing. She'd get up and was like, oh my God, she'd look behind her like, what, what was that? <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> a Phoebe was something. Later, um, she was all she was always a little cranky. Um, and later we found out that a lot of that had to do with the fact that she had really bad dental issues. In fact, when we, we first rescued her, we had to take and get some teeth out and had to get more teeth out. And eventually we got them all out. Was it, it was all of them, wasn't it? And she, she actually turned into a much sweeter dog at that point. I, I think she had just been in a lot of pain, you know, and she, I think she was just happy to be out of that pain. And uh, she even put up with me after that. So. Uh, anyways, Phoebe is, uh, she was one of a kind. So I'm glad um, Pat mentioned that she requested this song, so you uh, dedicated to Scout and the rest of those who have passed meant something to us so I just want you to know that that's why the song is in the mix and not because I wanted to channel my inner bed Midler it must have been cold there in my shadow To never have sunlight on your face You were content to let me shine That's your way You always walked a step behind So I was the one with all the glory While you were the one with all the strength A beautiful face without a name for so long A beautiful smile to hide the pain And you ever know that you're my hero And everything I would like to be Oh, I can fly higher than an eagle For you are the wind beneath my wings It might have appeared to go unnoticed But I've got it all here in my heart I want you to know I know the truth Of course I know it I would be nothing without you Did you ever know that you're my hero? You're everything I wish I could be Oh, I could fly higher than an eagle For oh, you are the wind beneath my wings Did I ever tell you you're my hero? Everything, everything I wish I could be Oh, and I, I could fly higher than an eagle For oh, you are the wind beneath my wings As you are the wind beneath my wings I thank you, I thank God for you, a wind beneath my wings. Thank you, Scott.
So now I'm going to bring Reverend Colleen up to, to our actually pet blessing. She's probably thinking, like, why did I have to come? Because I already feel blessed already. I don't know about you guys, but those are some really great stories and great sharing. But if you have the dog, if you have your dogs here and like to bring them up here, um, I would invite you to do so. And uh, we've got photos up here. And if we could run that slideshow again, uh, Sandy's, trying, she, Sandy's trying to get over there. She's wrestling with alligators, I mean dogs. Thank you, Tam. So, Colleen, if you could just do a little song and dance while we're <laughs> Well, I saved my, uh, saved my story about PJ. I kept my mother for about five years after she'd had a stroke and before we finally had to put her in a nursing home with a broken hip. But on her 95th birthday, I thought, what do you give a woman who's lived such an active life? She walked three miles a day, every day, until she had that stroke. So she was quite content to be outdoors and gardening and so forth. And I thought, well, I, if I could find her the puppy, the perfect puppy, I would give her a puppy. And so that's, we had a chihuahua for my youngest brother when he was little because he had asthma. And some uh, midwife told mom and dad that they'd give, uh, they put a, a chihuahua puppy with Van that that would cure his asthma. Something cured it. it. It definitely made a huge difference for his life. Never had it after that. So chihuahua. Well, I was looking for a rescue and none of the rescue people would let me take a dog and put it with mother for a week to see if that was a compatible fit. And on a Saturday night after I had put mom to bed, I was looking at the paper finally. And they had this Chihuahua Pomeranian mix. Well, I love Pomeranians. I had one that adopted me. And so I went tearing out across Memphis over to the Millington Naval Base and picked this little guy up when he was that tiny. I forgot to take a blanket with me. It was November. And, uh, and so I got him. He a little bitty tiny thing. It looked like a rat just about. So I didn't have anything to put him in and I set him on the console on the minivan and I started back across town with him and bless his heart he just slid off down on the floor <laughs> and uh, he had a terrible time making that transition to my house but mother uh, saw him the next day and she wanted to know what that was and I said well we're keeping him for a week or so for you know I, a surprise when she got the dog she figured it out that week it was it was her birthday week, so she figured it out it was for him. That dog kept her alive at least, at least four years longer than she would have otherwise. We knew when she'd get up in the morning because she'd come down the hall, she'd, oh, there you are. And, <laughs> but my little great niece said he was better than peanut butter and jelly, so that's how he got the name PJ. And on the way this week talking with Chuck about it, Chuck said, I have never seen such a well-behaved dog in church. How did you do that? And I looked at him, I said, he was raised in church. <laughs> <laughs> There's a book called The Secret Life of Plants. There's another one called The Secret Life of Trees. And there's another book called The Kinship of All Life by J. Daniel Boone. It was my first book to read about the higher intelligence, the incredible uh, telepathic abilities of dogs and flies, all kinds. I've been told for years that most Unity people have cats. I don't believe it, do y'all? <laughs> but I understand why, because cats go with right brain people and dogs go with left brain people for the most part. But I've had both all my life, as obviously you've heard me share. Blessing for a pet started with St. Francis of Assisi, and God bless him for that. If you want to know, I have always heard two things uh, that I buy. One is, if you want to know how a man will be with his wife, uh, notice how he treats his mother. And the second one is, if you want to know how people 
are deal with people, notice how they treat their pets. And so that's, that's from those people out there who are observers. But when you know somebody's heart, you just know. There is only the unity of all life. I love the opening statement. There's only one presence and one power in the universe. God the good, omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. And so our pets are an extension of God, are they not? And so as we, in the interest of time, as we move into this moment of holy blessing, I want us to close our eyes for a moment and think, you've been watching these pictures up here and you've seen the pets that are present. So I invite you to close your eyes and take your hands and hold them out like this. Let's all bless together. Let's for this moment bless each pet that's present here this morning. And remember that as you bless these pets, as we go through this process of blessing those that are here, those whose pictures are here, those who are ill, those who are lonely, those who are looking for their forever home, whatever we're giving out right now, we're only giving the carbon copy. The original re remains yet within us. So as you take your hands and open them out more, Put your hands out and surround the world. Create the picture that you've seen it a thousand times. A picture of planet Earth, our mother. It's our island home, complete with all of the many dimensions of life and levels of life. And let's just pour our love and our blessing into all of this. And I was reminded this morning, listening to Bruce Lipton, on an interview when he said that he had discovered the spiritual side of life. And he said, we're in chaos, but chaos really is the, precedes the time when we're going, making a quantum leap into a new uh, spiral of evolutionary growth. When this non-sustainable level of life that we're living will be let go and we will move into this place of higher understanding. Here and now, in this dimension, I loved it. So as we continue to bless this planet, bless these pets, bless those that have gone before us, many of them standing beside us, walking with us when we walk, there, some of them will meet us when, we, when we're over on the other side. As we do this with our hands, involve every sense you've got, sight, hearing, smell, taste, everything, and feeling the vibrancy of life, the kinship of our life, the power and blessing, the power in radiating this love that you are, that is you, will always be you, forever and ever. We set it in motion now to be a blessing upon this planet. This we pray in the name, nature, the will, the way, and the work of Jesus the Christ. And so it is. And we bring our hands together and bring them into a namaste fashion in front of us. And I'll repeat this affirmation and you repeat it, then we'll repeat it together. The divine in me blesses the divine in you together. The divine in me blesses the divine in you. And I bow to that divine in you, giving thanks for you in my life. And so it is. So I've always liked the song, It's a Wonderful World, but I was looking at it and I realized that, you know, and I didn't even look up who wrote this song. Anyways, whoever wrote the song talked about people and talked about nature and they forgot the critters 
They forgot to mention the critters. I had to add a verse. Otherwise, it's just like it was. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and for you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Skies of blue, clouds of white, and the bright blessed day, and the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Colors of a rainbow are so pretty in the sky. Also on the faces of people going by, I see friends shaking hands and saying, How do you do? They're really saying, I love you. There are creatures large and creatures small. I feel their love and I love them all. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I hear babies cry I watch them grow they'll learn much more than I'll ever know and I think to myself what a wonderful world yes I think to myself what a wonderful world. Oh, yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Thank you very much. So let us organize our, our offerings and remember this blessing. Let's say this together. Divine, Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive.
today we'll have a, have have you all are in there getting ready for a fabulous potluck. But today's service, you know, we are living in a land of I don't know right now, because as you all know, our spiritual leader Russ Jackman has resigned. He is still, you know, operating in the church office a little bit through the month of October. But uh, I didn't know how today was going to go, and you know what? And you didn't either, and, and it came out, I think, really well. Thank you, Tam, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> you know, and, and the oneness of, that Colleen brought forth with her blessing, and I, it was, was really meaningful, and I really enjoyed hearing your stories. That's what we need to know, we need relationships. And, and you all sharing as you did, I think that was, was really wonderful. Well, that brings me to this. We are in a land of I don't know, and I want you all to know that the board met with a Zoom conference online Wednesday evening, and we addressed several questions. And uh, the first thing is we've got October fairly well planned. Uh, Sandy's gonna speak next Sunday. I'm speaking on the 14th. Travis Wiley is speaking on the 21st. On the 28th, we're having our town hall meeting. And it will be kind of a, sh a, it'll be a service, but probably a little bit of shorter service. And, and at that town hall meeting, um, forgive me, I wrote notes because I wanted to make sure I, I told you um, everything. Um, so at that town hall meeting, that I know it's later in October, but this month of October is gonna give us a time to explore plans, have a conversation you know, between board and congregation and work with the transition team at uh, Unity Worldwide Ministries. We have already contacted them and they have given us uh, the initial paperwork that they want us to participate in and we're gonna do a uh, conference call with Carrie Kenyon, Reverend Carrie Kenyon, who's an, who uh, specializes in transitions for churches. Now this church has been through many transitions. I have been through many transitions here. I know we can do it. And I just want you to be aware that we don't have every answer right now, but we're really seeking answers. But the important thing is it's not just gonna come from the board, it needs to come from you all too. It's gonna require everyone's ideas, questions, input, and work. And while the board will be reaching out to members who are active and those who haven't been around for a while, we also request that you reach out to us and the people you know who might be interested in the future of Unity of Little Rock. So talk to us, write out your questions and ideas. Um, be ready for a productive, positive meeting on October 28th. Now, meanwhile, the most important thing that you can do is like you did today. Show up, be present. That is number one. The, uh, the other thing, we, you know, we still need the financial support. And uh, the latest quarter has been posted out there and you can ask me questions. I don't wanna get into it right now, but I will definitely answer any questions about that. I am going to uh, Dallas this afternoon for the Sea Week down there and I will be talking to Unity of Dallas. They have been very supportive of us and they will continue to do so. Probably we may have some LUTs coming up from there to speak and so forth. And um, I will be available for uh, questions in the, after the, in the potluck, but I do have to leave shortly before one o'clock today. So, but if you can't get me today, you can always call or email me. And that is on the wonderful directory that Sandy provided for us. So the, the, all that information. So uh, are there other announcements, Jeannie? Okay. The Hoot Nanny. And the Hoot Nanny is this Friday. And Bill, y'all really enjoyed, had a lot of fun at those. And so uh, you can see music is still an important part of our, of our community. Um, and wow. Do we need to say anything about WOW? No, 13th, okay, all right, very good. All right, so let's, uh, Colleen, maybe you wanna gather us up and we'll get in a circle and if you have any final words. 
I just want to say, uh, first of all, I do want to say that I, I inadvertently, with all the excitement of doing this service, did not, I have lost my copy of the peace song. So let's not do that today. Maybe we'll just do our closing statement here together. And uh, I'm going to hand this to Colleen and see if she wants to. I, well, actually, I just want to say I really enjoyed this today. I'm really, um, I'm really glad that everybody shared as much as they did. I loved hearing all the stories. And Colleen, do you have any last words? Aren't you happy I cut it real short? <laughs> I know. I didn't. I was a little worried about the time, but everybody was sharing, and it was just. I just thought it was so great. So uh, let's just say our closing statement, and maybe just after this closing statement, let's just all yay God together. So, the light of God surrounds us. I am the light. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love. The power of God protects us. I am the power. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Yay, God!